Hello there, my fellow stealers of Janes, and welcome back to another episode of 40k Lore. Following the vote from the previous episode, the one on the Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, today we shall get started on a new subtopic regarding the Jane Stealers, and that is the forces of the Jane Stealers. I figured it would be interesting to get started on the top this time, with the topics of today being the Magus and the Primus. Do stay until the end as well and vote on a future topic. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Magus is a Gene Stealer cult's primary enforcer, propagandist, and diplomat. They possess psychic abilities which are second in power only to the Patriarch himself. The Maguses are psychically gifted and possessed of a supernatural charisma. Their control of the hybrids and the brood brothers around them is total and complete. As the prophet of the Patriarch, the word of a Magus is law for those in their cult, and their telepathic abilities are more than powerful enough to enforce it. However, for all their commanding presence, intelligence, and mental skill, the Magus is just an extension of the will of the Patriarch through the cult Broodmind, just as the Patriarch is the embodiment of the wider Tyranid hive mind. The Magus is the foremost link to the Imperial aristocracy, the government, and the institutions on a given world. Should the dynasty find its expansion stymied by a planetary governor or another strong-minded rival, the Magus will pay this person a visit. And here, they will use either honeyed words or psychic power to force their obedience and convert them to the cause. In just a few moments, the deed is done, and instead of a difficult adversary, the cult now has a highly placed agent. The web of influence woven by Amagus ensnares all levels of imperial society, from the upper echelons of the spireborn nobles, to the street-level Arbites enforcers, and even to the ranks of the Imperial Guard. Amagus is born out of at least one parent who is already a psyker. Should an infested world harbor psychically gifted individuals of the right mental caliber, the pure strain gene stealers will sniff them out and psychically ensnare them, and then infect them with the gene stealer kiss. Maguses are tall, clean of limb, and with an imposing presence, and thus they can pass for a normal human any time and command respect wherever they go. In their soul, however, they are as much a creature of the void as a member of humanity. They hold in their eyes the same power as the patriarch and they are bound by the same drive to spread the cult far and wide. It is the Magus who speaks of their hidden organization in matters both mystical and spiritual, and in many ways they are the mastermind behind the spread of a cult across the planet and beyond. The burgeoning gene stealer cults will usually have only one Magus at their heart, who is the guiding hand of the uprising. As an insurrection swells and spreads across the surface of a planet, the new sites ripe for infection are located, and new sects of the cult are founded. As these brood cycles grow anew, other maguses are born overseeing these distant regions, and all the cells which operate inside them. These powerful bioforms even fancy themselves rivals of their peers of the same world, believing that their gene sire favors only one of their number as the High Prophet. They seek to outdo each other with ambitious acts of infamy and subversion. All of this, however, is an elaborate overture, because when the time comes, all their festering grudges and their differences will be put aside when the cult uprising begins. Any illusion of autonomy fades away, and then the Maguses work in concert to achieve the Patriarch's will, and knowingly or unknowingly, pave the way for the coming of the Tyranids. When the hour of ascension arrives, a Magus will lead the faithful of their gene sect to battle, unleashing the full and terrible might of their psychic power. Unable to resist the spellbinding influence of a Magus, blank-eyed Imperial soldiers turn their guns upon their comrades. Entire squads of enemy soldiers are left stumbling and dazed by waves of disorientating psychic power, unable to react to the masses coming behind them. 
The Gene Stealer Patriarch and the Magus are the mightiest psychers in a sect, able to use their formidable abilities to bend others to their will. This mental dominance not only ensures that the Gestalt consciousness of the cult's masses serve as one entity, but can also be channeled to crush those that would oppose them before their plans reach fruition. And thus, the powers that a Patriarch or a Magus can wield include Mass Hypnosis The eyes of the Psyker glow strangely as they cast their gaze upon a chosen victim, using mental dominion to put them into a trance-like state so the cult can take them apart, or present them to the Patriarch for infection. Mind Control Palsied fingers twitch and facial muscles spasm as the chosen mark of a Psyker is taken over completely. They are relegated to a mere passenger within their own body, forced to witness their own treacherous actions as they open fire upon trusted comrades. Psionic Blast This is when the Psyker focuses the alien hatred of their kind into a blaze of pallid energy. Where their gaze falls, the enemy are consumed, and the last thing they will hear is a screech of triumph. Mental Onslaught the Psyker, well used to forcing their will upon the enemy, intensify their hypnotic power to such a degree that it can literally cause the brains of their victim to explode. Psychic Stimulus This is when the power of the cult's gestalt broodmind flows into the Psyker's chosen instruments, spurring the cultists into a religious frenzy which sees them attack with hyperactive speed. Might from Beyond an alien power lurks in every being carrying the Gene Stealer curse. With a low whisper, this can rise to a scream, the Psyker amplifying the hidden might, and their followers are thus swollen with empowering energy born of the Void itself, enhancing their speed and overall combat potential. Secondly for today, and sort of at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Primus. A Primus is a hybrid of the third or fourth generation who serves as the main war leader and tactician of a cult. Commanding the Broodkin and Stentorian tones, the Primus stalks through the fires of war with the surety of a predator. Each one is an ambush leader and a frontline general. It is the duty of a Primus to show the supremacy of their kind's beliefs, rewriting the history of a world in the blood of those that oppose them. The Primuses are bombastic commanders in a time of war, but while the cult is still in hiding, it is their duty to spread the curse to other planets. Their innate gift for leadership and coordination sees them militarize any cult in short order. The Primus is a strong champion and a lauded hero among the Broodkin, emerging only when the cult reaches a position of strength. The savants of the Death Watch theorize there is a hidden genetic imperative in gene stealer DNA, which results in the manifestation of a Primus at a special time. This is either triggered when the cult reaches critical mass, when their numbers and influence are enough to take over a world, or when a high fleet looms on the edge of the planet system. Where Omegas boasts a pin sharp mental acuity and psychic powers equal to that of a space marine librarian, the Primus has a superhuman dexterity and shorty of focus, which can see them bring down an enemy twice their size. The war gear of a Primus complements this approach to stealth and guile, allowing them to lay low those in their path without raising unwanted attention. Each Primus brings to bear the finest equipment that a cult can provide, distilling toxins out of their own bloodstream and delivering them via needle pistols and paralytic toxin claws. Some of them wield strange sentient swords, believed to be grown from the bony secretions of the Gene Stealer Patriarch's biothrone. As an infestation's ascent reaches its peak, the behavior of a Patriarch changes, its instincts shifting from survival and reproduction to the more aggressive tendencies of a Tyranid warrior. And, of course, these changes are reflected in its Primus offspring. When they deem it right to lead their broodkin to war, they put into place complex military strategies and logistics. As the plan unfolds, a bow wave of terror, fire and anarchy 
spreads across the infected world. Should the cult survive the battles in strength, it will be its primuses who lead it to fresh prey, where the pure strain gene stealers will begin the cycle of infection and insurrection anew. It takes a lot of confidence and talent to be able to lead so disparate a force as those of a cult, uniting neophyte hybrids alongside pure strain gene stealers and the hulking aberrants. The Primus is ensured that they fight as one in an overlapping network of opportunistic assault and long-planned ambushes. When the business of war is at hand, Omegas will usually cede authority to the Primus, knowing that war is quite literally what they are made for. Their preferred method of attack is to burst out of underground lairs with scores of hand-picked warrior organisms at their side. From the darkness, these killers erupt boiling out of sewer grates and hidden crypts, with claws clacking and weapons thrashing. The enemy, previously oblivious even to their existence, scrambles to react to the sudden ferocity of the Primus' secret strike. So swift and certain is the assault, however, that very few adversaries can land a blow before they are cut to pieces. For today's poll, we will continue the mini-series on the Gene Steerer units. So, which one would you like to see next? Option A, Gene Stealer Specialists, Option B, Elite Units, or Option C, Regular Units. I put them into categories because there are so many of them, I probably won't do individual videos for each. They are all quite unique though, so vote with confidence in the comments below. And these, my friends, have been the leadership elements of a gene stealer cult that I wanted to tell you about today. Outside of the Patriarch, these guys are as high ranking as you get in a cult. Did you know about the Magus or the Primus until today? Are they among your favorite elements of a cult? What do you like or dislike most about them? Which one do you think is better and stronger? Do share any thoughts or questions if you have any in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe button for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor protects. The real one that is.